I played 100 days of Warframe to find out what the game is, to truly emerge myself in the community, art, in the game itself, and this is what happened. The first 10 days, you're thrown into an obscure world, a world that's a constant war with four main factions. The intro sequence is great and gives you a good introduction to the game. Afterwards, the first three planets introduce you to the most important three types of enemies. The Grenier, the Beep Boops, and the Covid Lovers. After unlocking Cetus and the Earth-Mars Bridge, this game becomes more of a choose-your-own-adventure game. You can rush everything and unlock Steel Path at MR6 and then fail, or you can slowly progress and min-max your frames and weapons to optimize your experience and destroy everything that gets in your way. However you want to play, you can play. What you realize in the first 10 days is that nothing makes sense. The modding system, crafting system, pet system, it's all confusing at first. The hardest part of this game is actually having the time to appreciate and understand how diverse and good this game is. There's over 400 hours of content to get through, 230 hours of which is story, realistically, and the rest is growing standing, understanding standing systems, and also rail Jack. There's also the Daviri Paradox. There's so much stuff, but it all links up together. It all makes sense in the end. It all lines up perfectly. After your first 20 days, you'll start to see why so many millions of players have played this game. The addictive nature of this game. The farm, craft, upgrade, repeat cycle, so you can complete the next level. So you can get to the next level of power. So you can move through the game like a ninja. You'll start watching how-tos for every little item in this game because there are no tutorials and the ones that exist suck total ass so you'll probably get most of the mechanics down by day 20 or you won't and you'll be confused for the next 80 days after your first 30 days you'll realize that some of the models in this game are sussy and you'll start to develop one of two ways. Either you hate the fact that they gave a character a literal pussy, or you'll love the fact and go and run that one Mars mission over and 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 over again and get all the parts for Citrine that day. You'll play the game all day. I'm not even joking. You just have to visit the Reddit to see what some people get up to. There's also a warning in advance of your intrusive thoughts coming to the surface. Never read a fan fiction. Please, God, don't. I haven't, but I did read somebody talking about it on the Reddit and straight up no cap deleted the app the next day. Avoid the Reddit. After your first 40 days, your addiction has upgraded to a passion of mass murder. I mean, saving the people you agree with. With an unhinged robot by your side, who's in control now, suckers? And a woman you haven't met in person yet, literal Discord mod, you also might run into Teshin or Space Dad by this point. He's based. Apart from that, most of these days you'll be running around killing countless members of different factions, then re-entering the mission and realizing it was all for nothing. Imagine after you beat a level, you could never play it again. Damn, that'd be insane. Anyway, after about this length of time, you'll start to get bored for your first time, and you'll realize you have to farm for the Necromech to start the new war. After 50 days, halfway there, you realize that, hold up, farming is easier when you start standing still AFK and are watching your favorite family-friendly internet videos on your other desktop. So you'll either buy everything required to mod an arcade Necros up to the point where you can AFK, or you'll farm or buy Octavia or Octavia Prime. Once you realize this epic principle of not playing the game and getting free resources, your way of playing the game evolves to farm blueprints, go AFK, repeat, and that's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we continue and get to 60 hours, we have a Discord you can join today. Link in the pinned comment, and you can now become a member of the Oriusker channel. Get your name at the top to flex on all the normies. Get custom stickers. Wow, look at those quality stickers that make you stand out against the crowd. Crowd. There's three tiers. Any tier will get you priority comment reply. But for Red Pill and Giga Chat subscriptions, there are members only polls, live streams, special Discord roles, and more. So you can flex on your fellow viewers everywhere. So if you like what I do and want to support me in what I do and also flex on everyone else, then become a member today. Let's continue. Your first 60 days will eventually lead you to discovering the geometric equation of Wisp's curves, and you'll start entering the Ropololist every day just to get her parts and farm Hexanon with other Warframes in order to craft her parts in order to use and appreciate Wisp. That's what 50 to 60 days do to you. 
stop the horn. This will take an entire week. By the time this is out, you can just buy Wisp Prime. Just buy the parts. Get over the weird intrusive thoughts plaguing your mind. Just, just, just buy them. But you can tell mods, just buy them. In your first 70 days, you'll probably have started trading and entering the world of economics in Warframe. This is a very addictive dopamine source. You have no idea how it feels to sell your built up mods that you don't use because you're maining one gun you like and you sell the mods you actually will need in the future. Or you won't because you'll just buy a bit of mods now, 30 days earlier than you actually need them. In your first 80 days, you'll start getting into Riven mods, Galvanized mods, etc. And etc. There are two types of people at this point. Normal, sane, perfectly mentally stable individuals. Then there's us, the Kuva Crack Farmers. Rivens are a mod that you can buy and then you have to roll with Kuva. The stats? Completely RNG and are purely generated through luck. No skill involved. So you'll roll and roll and roll and roll your Riven until your brain starts to melt out your ears and Alex Jones starts making sense. You'll start binging Joe Rogan. Have you ever seen Joey Diaz's balls? Yeah! Jamie, have you seen Joey's balls? See if you can pull out the picture of Joey. <laughs> Trying horse tranquilizers to escape the infinite darkness. Rivens? Not even once. You'll start modding your weapons for Steel Path. If you didn't just rush through the game, you'd have finished the main story missions, got the epic Nata Rook, and got enough mods without gambling your life saving. Okay, Kuva. What? Without gambling your life savings away on Kuva. Now it's the time to get into Steel Path. In your first 90 days of Warframe and first 10 days of Steel Path, you'll understand just how hard it is. That's what she said. Every mission has increased the level of enemies by a hundred levels. What does this unlock? Well, for starters, it unlocks better mods like galvanized mods, good arcanes you can basically only get from Steel Path consistently, and you unlock the new Daviri Paradox with higher drop quantities and better options. Here's the thing though. You can just trade. So is Steel Path actually that important? And my answer to that is yes, because Kuva. Because I need to roll my Riven 10,000 times in a single day. I need that Kuva. I need the Kuva. By day 100, you're probably ready to take your first or last break from Warframe. And this will determine if you're a real Warframe player or just a temporary person trying it. When Warframe players take breaks, something magical happens. DE releases new shit. So the more breaks we take as a community, the more content we get. This logic is infallible. My point is, you'll never be done with Warframe because they'll keep releasing new content until Soulframe comes out and the infinite cycle of addiction begins again until we all inevitably succumb to our limited mortality and die. If you enjoyed that, you'll probably enjoy this and subscribe and like this video for more.